Hey guys, thank you for clicking that video link and thank you to all my patrons. Um, shout out to Baritone Obsessed Facebook group, to the dude, to the bun. Thank you for all of you guys for supporting my channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed to Picat Studios in YouTube, please do so. Before we proceed, uh, as you can see, I'm not in the studio right now. Something bad happened. All my uh, major gear were stolen. So I'm right here in my sala, as we call it in the Philippines. It's so hot right now. So if you find this video, if you're keen on making your own conversion from a bass to a uh, basics or baritone, this is the video for you. You could I'll discuss some things prior the video I took in the conversion. Okay, so um, initial study, my initial studies before I went into converting is I took I looked around which bases are good for conversion. So firstly, the new Ibanez SRC MS BLL. It's the basics version for Ibanez. It's quite expensive. That's why I made this to mimic that. I can't afford uh, 45,000 pesos in pesos, the new Ibanez multi-scale SRC6. I also took a look at the Fender Basics. I found that I don't like the shape, the Jazz Master shape. I don't like the single coils and really the overall sunburst or the design of the body okay and then i took a look at a court action junior which is 30 inch in scale but has a 338 mm nut the first fender basics was 38 mm and then they improved that to 43 i think millimeters to widen the nut so 38 millimeters is, uh, the dude said, as I was inquiring in Baritone Obsessed Facebook group, that 38 millimeters is okay. You could pull it off with the 24 to 84 string gauge. However, it's going to be tight. So I was, from now, from that point, I uh, avoided 38 millimeter uh, base necks. Okay. So first requirement would be 30 inches and then above 38 millimeters. Okay, so court action junior, no for me. And then I took a look at a Bronco base, the Fender Bronco base, which has a one pickup and a short scale uh, 30 inch neck, but also has a 38.1 something which has which has a short uh, nut so that also I did not want to convert because for me I'm looking for 38 and above nut width even though if it fits the 30 inch scale and then I found there's this Japanese uh, surplus guitar uh, bass four string which is a Les Paul it's called Amaya it's not a well-known brand like LTD LTD has grassroots LTD ESPs going up, so they they have tiers like that. What I've heard is Maya is the most bottom, the cheapest uh, tier, and then if you have an L Maya, it's another, it's better, a higher tier. So this Maya Les Paul is really good. It has a 43 millimeter neck and 30 inches scale length, which is good but I am yet still to buy that and maybe convert it in another video. The base I had is a Fender Bracho base I got from a friend in the UK. The neck is like a tele base and I think I'm not quite sure if he made the body or is it from an Epiphone uh, base, okay? So initial measurements of the base I had, 
it has a 41 millimeter uh, nut width but 34 inch scale length so some of you might say that it's 34 and it's very hard to find strings for that kind of length however I found a workaround wherein you can use uh, store available strings for your 34 inch without compromising the wound the saddles the bridge width so there's a taper from the nut width down to the bridge width it's 60 millimeters first part of the video is body repair so I used a uh, UV resin wherein you can put turn resin into hardened resin using ultraviolet light it patches I was patching the holes in the previous uh, pick guard that was there I didn't want it to have a pick guard I wanted it to be all wood The second part is the neck reef profiling. I purposely reprofiled this uh, neck because I wanted it to mimic the Ibanez SRC6 MS uh, neck thickness. So the Ibanez SRC6 MS has a 19.5 millimeter uh, thickness at the first fret. And by the end of, of the neck reprofiling, I had mine at 16.5 millimeters, quite thinner. Actually used a, a chisel, which is not found in the video, and a circular angle grinder with a 100 grit uh, sandpaper and just went through the neck so it was faster than using a Dremel. I flushed it, it out as I, and then hand sandpapered it to my desired uh, thickness. I didn't show it in the video but I plugged the four string tuners, the head, the holes with dowels and then just used glue, uh, Elmer's glue, basically just Elmer's glue. And then shaved off all the clear coat in the uh, neck. So I was going to repaint that later on. So I removed all, including the logos. And then from there, the next part is installing the tuners. So installing the tuners, I used uh, Wilkinson uh, Deluxe uh, Split Shaft. You will need to use split shaft, shaft uh, tuners for this because of the dimensions of the large strings, the string gauge. Um, you're welcome to use others, but however, I think you would need to drill a hole in the tuners. So I, I purposely used um, split shaft vintage tuners from Wilkinson. And then from there, it was just basically winging it how to put in the tuners in so I just made a one millimeter line and then there's a center line in the tuners and you just put it there and then I measured all of the poles the distance from the poles to each other and then marked them and traced out the ferrules ferrules if we say traced out the ferrules to make a hole and then I drilled them out using a step ruler a step bit or you could use your other a regular bit if you
From there, I wanted to uh, route the body. I wanted the bigger cavity because I'm putting in active uh, electronics to the inside the body. So I wanted to make it a bigger body cavity. So I went to a friend of mine, a uh, woodworker. So he has all the tools there and he just, he's gracefully, he gracefully uh, dug out a bigger cavity and put in the battery compartment for the active controls. And from there, the next step would be painting. So painting it, you, there's a bare wood from all of the uh, drilling of holes. So I used epoxy, epoxy primer to prime the wood and that the paint would stick well. I also put epoxy primer on the neck so it would, the paint there later on would stick better and have the grains filled um, before you paint them. So there will, the grains won't, you won't see the grains after painting, okay. I proceeded on sanding out the clear coat from the body. You need to take out all the clear coat so you can put it on top, put paint on top of the uh, surf green. So some people would want to remove all of the paint. I'm just making the most, the sound decision not to. Some people would also put in epoxy primer before putting in base coat. So I didn't do that. I just scraped all of the clear coat and then painted it later on. Brushing out all of the clear coat and then leveling the epoxy primer. Uh, putting paper and covering the fretboard before painting. So this is another a good tip for you before painting anything. Wash, use a towel and put on detergent powder on the towel, some water. So it's actually a good degreaser and oil remover rather than buying from the store. Next step is mixing the base coat. So before doing that, warm up, warm up the, the paint you're using, stir it before mixing, stir it thoroughly, maybe for a good 10 minutes, and then mix it together. So I'm using lacquer, and then lacquer thinner. So one to one ratio, stirring it constantly. So first you'll feel that the paint when you mix it together, it feels thin. Actually, it's not mixed well. Stir, stir it a little longer and then you'll feel that the thinner and the paint have already mixed and it's thick, I mean thin. So I use one-to-one -one ratio because I'm going to spray, use a spray gun in spraying it. And so in terms of a spray gun, if your paint, this step is actually optional, but I'm just gonna share it. Um, you can, some people use, use spray cans you can do that but um, I just wanted it to look good and the paint would stick better so I used lacquer not uh, acrylic spray cans or even the samurai acrylic with epoxy if I'm not mistaken so lacquer is the best so in this example I'm using a LV LP spray gun a low volume low pressure spray gun there are other kinds but using that would make uh, the paint atomized better so my working pressure here is i think 25 to 30 psi so when i got the gun i also bought a gauge so when you open the spray gun it should shoot up uh, go down 
to the desired pressure level. So when you press it, it should go down to 25 or 30 PSI constant. So the paint would be constant. You should buy that uh, if you have a compressor. So before doing anything, painting, you should always, uh, if you're in a dusty place, water out the, the ground so that the dust will not uh, rise up and stick to your paint. So first, this is the first coating, the black. I'm spraying the neck and the body so I could do a better job at hanging the items but <laughs> I don't have the equipment for that however maybe in the future I will make so this part of the video is the base first coat I coated the body three more times and then the neck I went up to six or seven because it had no paint before. The body had already the surf green paint, so I did lit less compared to the neck. I didn't show all of the coats, it would bore you out. So this is just the first the base first coat. And then after that, uh, I sanded them out, the black paint. I wanted it to level, there were some bumps. So I had to do the sanding again to clear out all of the bumps and make it look really nice. After maybe two to three days of drying, it's time for a uh, matte finish. So in the in our country, the Philippines, this is for automotive use. So I'm using polyurethane, Anzal. So there's a catalyst and a thinner. It depends on your brand. So mine is has instructions on how to mix it. But basically, the thinner and the polyurethane is also one to one and then I just sprayed that so it's it's matte finish so it's not gonna shine I just took uh, three coats for each of the items body and neck um, resting for a bit in between coats okay So the next part is sanding the clear coat, the top coat of, so I'm using a 1000 grit sandpaper with uh, a dab that with water and then sanded out the bumps and areas that need sanding. As you can see, it's it looks glossy, but it's actually not. And then I had to dry that out for another five days so it would be fully cured and you won't it won't chip easily it won't get uh, marks after so you have to dry it out for a long time okay
So next step, I just remove all of the tape to cover that I used to cover the pick up cavity, the neck cavity. So be careful in removing these uh, tapes. Sometimes the paint and the when you remove it will not chip correctly and will take away some paint with it. So use a cutter or whatever tool to remove the paper, the tape you're using carefully. So the the pickups I had were our HMB. They're found in some major brands as stock pickups. So our, it re reads 9.83 and ohms. So it's almost like EMG. So I didn't opt to buy another pickup set. By the way, good information is um, when you buy pickups for your conversion, bladeless or pickups that don't have uh, poles, you don't need to center them per string. So bladeless or uh, pickups with no pole pieces are very good when you're putting them in because you don't have to align each string to the the pole pieces so uh, take note of that when you're purchasing pickups for your conversion it's better to have the no bladeless i think or the pickups with no pole pieces so you don't have to align it perfectly you just put it there maybe align it left and right that's it and then i just put the pickups inside and screwed them on next is i put the neck and body together and bolted them on so I did an initial string uh, test using some butcher's uh, thread. So by the end of this video, I ordered some string trees. I haven't received them. Maybe in the future, I, I'll put them in, but not in this video. The string trees have not yet arrived when I ordered them. Okay, so the bridge is, I measured the bridge and the old bridge from the base. So theoretically, it was, it's high enough. And then the Gibraltar, I measured the width of the strings in the bridge and it seemed okay for, it's not as wide as the four string base that I had, which measured uh, about almost 60 millimeters but you don't need 60 millimeters because you're playing a guitar by the way if you're looking to convert bass you know, there's a very big taper i mean angling going down to the bridge from the neck so i was actually thinking of converting a five string because it has a very wide nut and 
in the bridge was the problem because there's the nut is okay, but when you go down to the bridge, it's so wide that it's not not almost a guitar anymore. So four strings with 38 millimeter above uh, nut with basses are good for conversion. I'm using the Didario EXL156 uh, 24 to 84, which has, by my uh, research, 35 usable uh, inches length for the string. So there's 35 inches of usable uh, string space, string area before it tapers down to a smaller wound for the tuners. And this part of the video now is I'm measuring the drill bit width of the string and the ball end. The Didario EXL156 have a guitar ball end so be careful with that when you're modifying your bridge. I measured that the drill bit I'm gonna use is enough for the strings to go through but not the ball end. So I drilled the Gibraltar bridge from the back so it would not be string through body anymore but top loading. So be careful with doing that. I have no proper uh, clamps, so I'm just really being careful in doing that. As you can see now, the the strings went through and the ball ends don't go through. Okay, so that's the mod for the bridge. And you should also clean the drill hole to minimize damage on the strings. Okay. So now I'm showing you that I I the spring, the retainer spring, I cut them in almost one third to two-thirds ratio and put them here so I could uh, when you roll it when you roll the saddles back it fits on the one inch so your maximum intonation line would be the, the thinnest string saddle the thinnest string saddle would be put in the line and that's your uh, that's where you put the bridge However, due to the one inch uh, difference in string length, I, what I did is uh, back up the saddle to one inch apart from the, where the strings are starting. So now, this is my maximum intonation line and this is my uh, string starting point. So. 1 inch plus 34, that's 35 inches. Uh, there might be not so much of intonation. Uh, uh, you can intonate it very much. However, it will provide the... There won't be... You won't have problems with the tuning because you are using the same uh, weight and uh, gauge throughout the entire fretboard. So that's why you need to do this. You need the 34 inch saddles and the 35 inch from there so you'll see that there's a the saddles are really backed up okay i hope you understand that
To install the bridge, you need to measure the center line. So you just follow the fretboard taper and then put it put a line. So, and then you determine the center line. So you measure the 34 inches from the nut. And then make a line uh, basing on my project. I base that on the straight, I mean parallel line from the pickup cavity. So I know that I'm in, in a straight line because of the pickup cavity I am basing. You could use other tools for this, but for me this is the best uh, way I could come up with a straight line. From that straight line, that would be your um, third, uh, your intonation line, your maximum intonation line. And then you find another center line to center the saddles, three to three on the side and three on the other side. Okay. You also need to measure the one inch from the intonation line. So the saddles on the third, the saddles are on the thirty-four inch uh, intonation line, and then the strings where it starts should only be one inch away. So you will need that you will meet the thirty-five inches.
I just drilled the holes from the for the bridge. When you connect the ground wire, make sure to scrub off to uh, get off the paint from the back of the bridge plate so it will ground correctly. So now I'm using a Graftech task nut, which is a blank, and then I'm just now making a nut from that whole piece. So what I did is I went to tlcgoodguitars.com and I put in the strings. This is a nut calculator and the nut width, the string gauge, and it will give you the proper uh, string spacing for you. And then you'll just need to scrape off the uh, nut where the strings will sit. So in this video, it's just an initial one. It's, it's really high. It's, it goes deeper as I set up the entire uh, basics. So now I'm putting in the tuners and you will see that that's why you use split shaft because of the gauge of the strings. The taper is correct. It goes after the nut and also on the second string
So after that, it's just a basic setup, uh, saddle setup. I used I used a a lower than a base low action for the string string height because it's a bass and a guitar so it's it should be lower than the action of the bass based on the ruler i set up the knot i i cleaned up the knot and made sure that it's the maximum uh, depth i could have for the knot and adjusted the saddles I'm copper shielding the insides. Uh, this is the active preamp with the three band EQ. And the battery is already installed in this video. So I'm drilling a hole for the volume and blend knob. So these pickups actually can be split coil, but I didn't use them. So the green wire goes to the blend knob. Um, you just tape off the red and white together and don't connect it, that to any anything. The black and ground are sold together on the body as ground. So only the green one goes to the blend knob. All other wires are not used. Okay, so I didn't include the pick up, uh, pick guard making because I just, it's really, it looks really, really bad. <laughs> I need to make, maybe ask my friend again to make a wooden uh, pick guard cavity uh, cover next time. So I hope you find this video useful. Thank you very much for sticking with me through the video. Um, I hope you uh, subscribe to my video and thank you very much. I hope you good luck if ever you're making your own conversion. This is Pikat. Thank you very much.